Tonight is January the 2nd, 2019. I want to show you, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, some stuff I've been working with tonight and some things I hope to build this coming year. Um, I have come into uh, the privilege of having a bunch of these uh, UTC transformers. United Transformer Corp. Here is a LS61. I'll have another one just like it. I believe it's supposed to show up Thursday. It's Wednesday right now. Here is a pair of LS57s. These two are 5K or 3K with all of those bazillion uh, secondary impedances. This one is 10K and 6K. I've been checking them tonight. I want to make darn sure they're good before I uh, use them. And these two are. These three are. You know, you have to jumper like you jump. You put these jumpers on there. And then you take like seven and a half ohms off across right here, or whatever, whatever the uh, the books say. The, these UTC transformers are absolutely beautiful. They're a little bit the uh, wiring diagrams and everything that it takes to uh, make that work is sometimes a little frustrating, but um, they are beautiful. One of the reasons I build these amplifiers is just to prove to myself and then post onto YouTube for everyone to see as best I can the performance of them. I generally build a, um, a Williamson type circuit. The first thing to do with your transformer, uh, that'll give you probably 90% of everything you need to know, is just do a, a voltage ratio check. Voltage ratio from secondary to primary. I use, to be safe, a high impedance like 600 ohm or above. Uh, a high impedance uh, oscillator so that I don't generate enough voltage or enough current to electrocute myself no matter what side I put it on. The uh, turns ratio generally from 8 ohms to 5k is like 25 to 1 so if you put in uh, 1 volt on the secondary you'll get 25 volts on the primary things like that. Things that are safe, things that are low current that won't hurt you. Uh, if you want to actually start measuring other things, you know, you, you'll impedance. You'll need a uh, you need resistors, and then I use this. Uh, I still use this old uh, General Radio uh, ZY bridge. It's at, just a marvelous device. So much fun to use. Drive it with these old oscillators. You get plenty of voltage out of these things. I think you can get about 25 or 30 volts out of them. And then I use this. Uh, detector right here. I guess I could turn it down a little bit without a load on. It's a little high. These things are vacuum tube. This one uh, works really well. It's, it's good to terminate them with 600 ohms. That makes the uh, the meter work so much better. You got to have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, printouts. This is my this is my basically my transformer book where I have things that I've saved from practically when I was a kid transformer manual. These I printed off the internet of course. Some of these older transformers are a little hard to come uh, a little hard to find the data on. Uh, besides that here's a uh, here's a power transformer a G CG422. I was going to show you that one. Darn it. I covered it up. No I didn't. Right there. Look at this one. This one is uh, just perfect for uh, see that CG422 over here on the right hand side you see filament for 2.5 volts at 5 amps so if you're a 2A3 lover that would be the, the thing to have for that well besides these let me show you some of these some of this other UTC iron I have try to move slow here I know some of y'all don't like me moving the camera around but I have to do this here's a uh, UTC LS60A this one was recommended to be used I think with uh, a quad of uh, 6L6s, which is what this amplifier is going to be. And it's going to be built to the uh, Western Electric W20. 20 watt amplifier with four big 6L6s. Nowadays we would expect to get a hundred watts out of four of these guys. And there's the transformer. Look, look at the size of that thing. I mean, these things are not small. I believe it's rated at 30 watts. Here's the power supply for it down here. A lot more UTC iron. It's a power transformer, a choke, and a choke back here. 
Now it's going to be built component for component for the Western Electric uh, W20. Here's one that you've seen too many times probably. This is a Williamson that uses, I have a pair of these guys too. These are the uh, little uh, James Transformers. I'm not using the other one at this time. Sometimes I want to build stereo amplifiers and sometimes I say, man, I did a lot of work. So I build mono amps and uh, that's what I listen to. I mean, I'm either listening to this one or so many other ones that I have right now. I'm listening to this guy right here. I can't turn the music music up and let you listen to it because uh, YouTube will censor it and won't let people in other countries uh, see my videos because of copyright laws or something. But here's a lot of more, a lot more of UTC iron. Here's some uh, nice chokes. Here's another one. Here's a, a grid choke, as I believe they're kind of known. Hope you can read that. It's 2,500 Henrys. You can use these uh, to drive push-pull, and you get about twice the drive voltage uh, as you do if you're using an RC coupling. So that's kind of good, especially, well, I'll get back to that again. Here's another output transformer. These are all uh, chokes and power transformers and stuff over there. Here's some really exotic little driver transformers. This one is called an LS39. This other one is called a LS37. I don't know if you can read all those. Um, back in the old days, I would say back in the late 30s, early 40s, mostly these types of transformers, you have to be very careful if you're thinking about buying one of these off of uh, eBay because they're basically line input to push-pull grids or something like that and the power rating on them is extremely small these are not tiny little things but the power rating on, on them may be 0 dBm or even 10 dBm you know 0 dBm is a milliwatt uh, 10 dBm is uh, you know 10 milliwatts 30 dBm is 1 watt and you hardly see any of these rated more than if, if that much 30 dBm the highest power is 1 watt so you know, you can get a lot of voltage gain out of this, and if you're driving a Class A amplifier where you never draw any grid current, then this thing right here, these transformers right here, down with just a line input of a few milliwatts, uh, can take the place of, a, of an active uh, vacuum tube stage. So there you go. That's what these are good for. I'll, I don't know if I'll ever use them, but they're there. Uh, these are power transformers. Oh darn, what was I going to say? I was going to tell you something about the transformers. Um, I save old components. I do check them. Uh, I like the old components. I don't always use them. I have drawers of, of new stuff, of the orange drop and things like that, which I generally use. But to me, if they're good, well, like a .25. It's hard to find a .25. Everything nowadays is a .22, which is perfectly fine if you know what I mean so you do what you can um, I just wanted to show you in general this is where I use this is the jig that I uh, came up with I, I got the schematic and the, the write-up off the internet to measure the inductance still this one still gives me I'm convinced uh, the most accurate and reliable inductance value it's kind of complicated got to use your oscilloscope and a couple of meters and, and, a, and a signal generator and all that kind of stuff, you know, you gotta, you gotta know the voltage you're putting across it. I don't have it set up for that right now. But that is that, and those are my upcoming projects. Like I say, I've got two of these. I'll have two of these come Thursday. So, I'm going to start building things. I'm gonna build these for a person. And so these probably won't hang around too terribly long. Of course, it's probably gonna take me a year to build all this stuff. And then these right here, I actually plan on using these with triodes. I have some Svetlana 572 10s, which are the uh, the uh, the uh, triodes with a gain of 10, a mu of 10, whatever you want to call it. That's actually what I was going to mention a while ago. Is um, these transformers here have so many taps on them, you can get bias voltage off of them. You know, you have to have some pretty high uh, voltage level minus 60 volts or better maybe you know maybe a minus 100 you have to have some pretty high 
negative bias voltages on these low gain triodes otherwise the uh, plate current runs away and then you then after that then you have to use something some driver stage that puts out a lot of voltage I mentioned this before not a lot of current or power but a lot of voltage and you can get double the voltage out of, a, out of an active um, vacuum tube stage using these as they're called now grid chokes um, I think they call them impedance chokes actually in the, in the older books and uh, you need that higher voltage level to uh, drive these these low mu triodes so that you can get the max amount of power out of them well that's it for right now I don't have any thing uh, built that I have to show you at the moment but I hope in the next uh, few weeks and months to come uh, that's what I will be doing and posting it um, thank you all for watching I always enjoy the uh, the comments and the things that I learned from you all so uh, have a good new year in 2019 and I uh, hope to see you again soon on the uh, on the uh, on the YouTube channel thanks for watching